Alright, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be going through how to update your service node. So if you're already running a service node and it's currently live, how do I go to the next version of Loki? Or if there's a hard fork coming up, how would I upgrade my service node uh, to be on that new version without having uh, the risk of going down? Um, and, and being deregistered from the network. Uh, so there's there's always a minimal risk if you don't follow um, the exact procedure let out here or if you make a mistake during the procedure that you will go offline and that will result in you being deregistered. But generally, if you follow um, the steps that I show you here, uh, your uptime proof should be communicated and there's a two-hour leeway in which you have to communicate that uptime proof so you don't get deregistered. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, find the relevant software that we need to upgrade to. So, um, if I recall correctly, my nodes are running on uh, version 1.1 of 1.0.1 uh, of uh, Loki of the Loki release. So, I want to update them to the latest release, which is 1.0.3. There's not actually any uh, hard fork changes in these releases, but um, we've released a number of kind of um, quality of life improvements, and uh, there's also some additional stuff to do with how uh, uptime proofs are communicated um, in this newer release, uh, which specifically uh, makes makes this process a lot easier and makes it a lot harder to um, accidentally deregister yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on the latest release and this is in our GitHub of course. Uh, I'll put this in the description of the video um, but you always want to check the latest release here um, because it might not be 1.0.3 at the time that you're listening to this guide. It might be 2 or 1.5 or something like that. So I'm just going to click here and then I'm going to grab the uh, Loki Linux uh, binaries here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on them and then I'm going to go copy link address. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up to my uh, service node. So I've got a service node here. We'll just do service node 1. Uh, log in as root. Put my password in. Alright, cool. Hopefully it connects up here. Cool, we're connected in. Um, just to check everything is running, I can go top. Uh, I just type top in and click enter, and you'll see it'll load up the processes here, um, and we'll see probably a Loki D running. Yeah, you can see Loki D there, so that's the process that I want running, obviously, on this um, on this here service node. Uh, so I'm going to go Control C um, to get out of top. Be careful when you do. Um, press Control c because Control uh, c kills the currently running process, so uh, be careful about doing that on the actual service node itself. Uh, so what I'm going to type here is ls, and you can see the files that I have downloaded, so I wasn't running uh, one version 1, I was running 1.0.1. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type wget, uh, I'm going to miss an e there, wget, and then copy what I had before. So copying and pasting, you just uh, go here and then copy link address and the way you paste into putty is obviously by using the right click button um, right click just paste in whatever you had in there uh, and I'm gonna click enter so you'll see it downloads the um, binaries here and that was pretty quick so I'm gonna type ls again uh, see that the binaries are there then I'm gonna unzip those binaries unzip Loki Linux uh, 1.3 cool it's gonna unzip those type ls again um, and it's unzipped those correctly cool so uh, what I'm going to do now and this is probably the more scary part of things is uh, now that I've downloaded the binaries I'm going to shut down my currently running daemon and I'm going to quickly start up the the uh, the new daemon so uh, to do that I'm going to go screen r and you can see it's a bunch of log messages in here my service node has been running fine um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click Control C, and this is the scary part. This is where your actual service node is going down. Um, so I'm just going to bring it down, and we'll see it's stopping. All done. Now I'm going to type ls again. See what folder I'm in. Uh, so I'm in the 0.1.1 folder here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that. So cd dot dot will get you back to the last directory you were in. And assuming you downloaded these to the root folder, um, your 1.0.3 should be in there. So I'm going to type ls again, and we're going to see the folders. Now we're going to do cd, uh, and we're going to go into 1.0.3. So Loki, Linux, using the tab completion here, so tab to complete the file names. 3, uh, yep, I'm going to click enter, 
ls again, and then I'm going to do loki d dash dash service node. And I missed the little uh, dot and uh, forward slash here. And that looks like all I need to do. I click enter. It's starting up. We'll just watch it start up. Hopefully it doesn't have any issues. Doesn't look like it's had any issues. Looks like it's syncing one block and it's synchronized okay. Um, and we'll just do um, print also sn uh, status here. And you'll see the last uptime proof is not received yet. Um, this this uh, service node should start publishing uptime proofs um, nearly as soon as it starts the uh, the new daemon, so uh, or the updated daemon rather. So we'll uh, we'll come back to this and uh, in a couple of minutes, and hopefully it'll uh, have posted its first uptime proof. Uh, but if you were just running this, what you can do now is you can go Control A D, and this will background the process, and then just to check that everything's working fine, you can type top. Um, and top, hopefully what we'll see here is a uh, Loki D will come up um, as running and you can see Loki D is running there. So I'm going to go control C um, and then I'm going to go screen dash R to reattach that and I'm just going to run uh, service node, service node, uh, pr sorry, print SN status and that'll show me when I, uh, when I publish my uptime proof essentially. So we'll, we'll come back uh, when I've published my uptime proof and I can show you what to do after that. So you can see that did take a little bit of time. I ran uh, print SN status a couple of times before uh, my uptime proof finally came through. But you can see um, in the daemon logs, it actually starts. It it prints out um, when it's actually sending the uptime proof. Uh, so you can see here um, after it sent this uptime proof, I um, pushed through the um, print SN status. And this isn't obviously you don't need to sit here and type print SN status for this to work. It'll work fine without your supervision. Um, I just wanted to give an average on maybe how long it would take. So for me, it took half an hour until uh, the uptime proof was finally received by the network. So um, the other way you can see is if you go print SN key, um, it'll give you a public key here um, and you can copy this. Just right click, just print it, press enter here. Um, and you can come to Loki Blocks and paste it in here. And I've already pasted it in here, but you'd, you'd go home and uh, click here, paste, search. Uh, and you can see in this column here, last uptime proof when it was published. And mine was five minutes ago. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of the guide on how to do it, how to upgrade your, uh, your service node um, safely without having uh, much uptime or much downtime rather. Um, the final thing you always want to do, and please, please, please do not forget this: when you exit your, uh, or when you when you exit your Loki daemon, um, you always want to just use Control A D. Never use Control C because Control C will kill the entire process. So I'm going to type Control A D, and that's going to background the process. And the last thing you want to do is you always want to type top, and you'll see the process is running. And you just want to wait a little bit until this refreshes. And what you should see at the top um, when it refreshes is a Loki D running. And you can obviously see a Loki D up here. Um, so that's something you should always do when you log into your service node. You should check that Loki D is running. Um, and when you log out, you should also check that Loki D is still running. Um, and it bounces up and down here. So you can see it's still running here. So I'm going to go Control C here because I'm in top. I'm not in my service node right now. Um, and we can just exit here. Just press the X button. Um, and you can always keep up to date with uh, when your last uptime proof is coming through here. I think um, uh, Jaegerman also made a uh, service node bot which uh, will ping you if your uptime proof has been longer than an hour. Um, that's a good resource. I'll put that in the description too. So um, hopefully now everyone has a clear under understanding of how they should upgrade their service node and um, you won't be too nervous about, about doing it. Um, and this will be the, uh, uh, the same or a very similar process every time. Um, we push an update and we'll tell you obviously if it's a mandatory upgrade or you just um, maybe want to get onto this software next time you restake. And uh, just a quick note before I finish the video, uh, we will be making some changes to the way auto staking works and that will start from version 1.0.4 of the Loki uh, wallet. So the changes we're making is we're disabling uh, auto staking on open pools. So if you're if you're a pool contributor and you're not sure whether you're in an open pool or not, that's something that you can ask your um, 
service node operator, uh, but if you specifically gave your address to a, uh, a pool operator and they um, set aside a contribution for you, more than likely you're not in an open pool. Uh, but yeah, the way we're changing things and the reason we're changing things is because open pools have a high risk of um, people staking uh, n n well, not necessarily all of the participants staking, so you can imagine if you're in an open pool with 45,000 Loki or 43,000 Loki, and three of the contributors have auto stake on, um, and they all stake, well now their Loki is locked for 30 days, and unless they find another participant to be in their pool, well then their Loki is going to be locked for no reason um, until they get, get that fourth participant to, to come in and fill their extra so that they can actually become a service node. We're still keeping closed pools, uh, uh, we're ke still keeping auto stake for closed pools, and the reason we're doing that is because um, in closed pools you're more likely to be uh, cooperating with people you trust, um, and if you have some trust with these people you can probably assume that they will be staking, um, and if they're not staking they can tell you ahead of time so you can disable auto staking. So I just wanted to show you how you can actually run um, the new wallet, and the way the way auto staking works, and I think a few people might have misunderstood this, is um, basically auto staking works by there's a wallet running in the background. So if I type in uh, top here, uh, you can see, and I scroll down with my uh, arrow buttons here. Let's see if I can find the uh, Loki wallet cli that will be running, and you can see. It's this process here. If my thing stops scrolling up, it's this process here. So you can see it's running in the background. It's waiting uh, essentially for the network to signal that your service node has been deregistered de after 30 days. It sees that and then it automatically restakes your Loki. Um, so if you did use auto stake and you would have known that because when you did uh, register you or sorry if you did stake if you're a contributor it would have been stake auto instead of just stake um, so I'll show you how to run the new wallet version and there is a couple of added benefits to the new wallet as well um, it prevents you from staking from a sub address which you shouldn't do um, and it also finally tunes the way that we actually calculate the staking requirement each period you auto stake. Um, so people who don't really necessarily need to worry about this, uh, the people who are solo running their service nodes, you can stay on the later version. Obviously we'd prefer you to upgrade so you get the new features um, that are enabled here and it makes it a bit harder to do things wrong. Um, but I'm just going to go control C here to get out of top and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type P kill uh, and Loki wallet Cli. So this will kill the currently running auto stake wallet. So if I click enter there um, and I go top again, we'll have a search through and it's going to be unlikely that Loki Wallet Cli is still running. Um, the other way you can actually do this, and yeah, we can see that there's nothing there. Um, the other way you can do this if, if pkill doesn't work for you is you can see beside each process here there is a PID, which is a process ID. You can type kill, just K-I-L, and then the process ID, and, and that'll also uh, kill the process that's currently uh, running. So if I go control C to, uh, to exit that again, um, and I type in LS, I can see that I've downloaded um, the Loki Linux here. I'm going to go CD Loki Linux um, and this would be uh, 1.0.4 for you. Um, I've just got the old version here. I'm just using it to illustrate a point. Uh, so if I type ls again, I can see that I have Loki Wallet Cli. So I'm going to go dot slash Loki Wallet Cli. Oh, I typed Loki D Wallet Cli. It's not going to work. Enter. Sweet. It'll enter. I'll just put in the name of my wallet. No password. This is just the, this wallet doesn't have anything in it. Um, and then the command I would run if I wanted to do stake or stake auto, and this is if you're a pool contributor. Um, if you have registered your own service node, then you will need to run the registration commands again. Um, so I recommend you do this uh, as the staking period ends. Uh, so you can run the register command again, you can get the output and then run it again. But if you were just a contributor to a pool, what you would do is you go stake. Um, and then this is where you either want to put auto or no, or, or you just leave auto out. Um, as I said before, if you're in an open pool, auto won't work for you. But if you're in a closed pool and you trust the other people that are in the pool, then you can just leave it um, as is. So you could go um, auto. 
and then the uh, the guide. Let me have a look. So it's service node pub key. So uh, your service node operator will know the public key of your service node. Um, let let him uh, or let him or her tell you what the public key uh, of the service node is. Um, if you know what it is, you can paste it in here. Uh, then it's the address. Uh, so that's your your payout address or the address of your wallet most commonly um, and then the contribution amount so the amount that you're actually going to contribute to the service node um, so if you put all of that in and you just press enter um, it will it will uh, fork into the background and you'll have a new wallet that's running um, with the latest version and it'll know when to stake again so that's kind of how you would upgrade your wallet if you were auto staking as well which um, some people are if you're just using stake don't worry about it um, just make sure that when you uh, stake the next time you're running the correct version of the wallet and you don't use the old version of the wallet. Um, so yeah, that'll finish off the guide. Uh, thanks for listening and, and I hope you guys uh, have a have an easy time upgrading it. I know it's a couple things to think about and maybe it can be nerve-wracking bringing your node down uh, for a little bit of time, but um, there are a lot of things that we've put in place uh, just kind of in the recent uh, weeks and months to make this process a bit easier and to also make it uh, harder, to, harder to make things uh, go bad for yourself essentially and uh, hopefully this guide will uh, bring you in the right direction and of course we also have uh, the full written guide here which has the details of everything here and all the commands and stuff so if you want to check back in with the guide uh, feel free to do so uh, so thanks guys for listening